Seven things you probably didn't know, you need to know. I'm Jamie East and this, this is the Smart 7. Good morning, it's Monday the 27th of April 2020 and a big happy birthday to Russell Davis, who, yes that's right, Doctor Who, Tess Daly and Lizzo. Coronavirus continues its sweep across the world, with global cases now close to 3 million, with 1 million of those in the United States. Here in the UK, following his battle with COVID-19, Boris is back to work, sneaking in the back door of number 10 last night, and hopefully he's fully recovered. But if you're unemployed and struggling, the government that brought you Brexit and got rid of all those migrant workers has got a little bit of a suggestion for you. Fruit picking anyone? Environment Secretary George Eustace. Nope, me neither. We're also acutely aware that we're about to start the um, British season in fresh produce, in uh, soft fruits and uh, salads. Uh, We estimate that probably only about a third of the migrant labour that would normally come to the UK uh, is here and was probably here before lockdown. And we are working with industry to identify um, uh, an approach that will encourage uh, those uh, millions of furloughed uh, workers, in some cases, to consider taking a, uh, a second job, helping get the harvest in in June. Six. In the US, as deaths continue to climb, controversy has raged around Donald Trump's suggestion that people should inject disinfectant. He now describes his remarks as sarcastic and spent the whole weekend sulk-tweeting about the nasty media, including suggesting that journalists return their Nobel Prizes. Sheesh. Dr Deborah Birx, the White House's lead on coronavirus, appeared on CNN and, under pressure from Jake Tapper, continued to sidestep and defend the president. Well, I think it bothers me that this is still in the news cycle because because I think we're missing the bigger pieces of what we need to be doing as an American people to continue to protect one another. And we should be having that dialogue about asymptomatics. We should be having that dialogue about this unique clotting that we're seeing. And, you know, we're the first country that really had young people to this degree. Italy and Europe is about eight years older than us as a median age. So this is the first experience of this virus um, in an open society where we really can understand what's happening. Meanwhile, in crazy town, Texas, Alex Jones of InfoWars fame leads a bunch of protesters in chants of... Yeah, they actually want to lock up Bill Gates because the tinfoil hat brigade are now blaming him for the virus when, in fact, he's donated a small fortune to help find a vaccine. If you spend any time on the internet this weekend, you probably saw that Kim Jong-un was dead, or at least close to death, and people posting pictures of his sister as the new leader of North Korea. Well, the good people of South Korea say that none of that's true. Rumours spread after Kim Jong-un disappeared from public view, with American intelligence agencies speculating that he was gravely ill after a surgery that went wrong. His personal train, yep, has been parked at the same private gateway for most of the coronavirus crisis, but now South Korean leaders say he's fine. I guess we'd better check in on his best friend in the world. He's probably a bit worried. Look, I just hope he's doing fine. I mean, I've had a very good relationship with Kim Jong-un, and that's to the benefit of the country. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And I'd like to see him be well, and we'll see how he does. Again, I don't know that the reports are true. Sometimes good things happen to good people. Asked recently on CNN who he would want to play him, Dr Anthony Fauci, leading light of the American battle against the coronavirus, had an immediate answer. Which actor would you want to play you? Um, Here are some suggestions that I've heard. Ben Stiller, Brad Pitt. Which one? (laughs) Oh, Brad Pitt, of course. (laughs) So, Saturday Night Live made his dreams come true. First, I'd like to thank all the older women in America who have sent me supportive, inspiring, and sometimes graphic emails. Now, there's been a lot of misinformation out there about the virus. And yes, the president has taken some liberties with our guidelines. So tonight, I would like to explain what the president was trying to say. Three. It's time for sport. What? Oh, no, 
Nothing. Absolutely. There's nothing at all. Sorry. Okay. In that case, let's check in on One, di- one Direction. What's uh, Liam Payne up to? Well, he started a YouTube channel with weekly videos, but he's mainly been watching Travis Scott concerts on Fortnite. Highlight of the week, the Travis Scott concert on Fortnite. Like, I didn't think I didn't think I'd feel the way that I did about it. It was unbelievable. Like it inspired me to want to go and like make something. I, I mean, obviously afterwards I made nothing. God, we really do need sport back. Two. Lockdown can be hard, and lockdown on your birthday. Well, it's not great, especially if you're an 88 year old grandmother and you're self isolating. But Norma Gregorio handled it well. Her grandchildren sent her a cake and she videoed herself celebrating and it went viral. It was a surprise. I looked at that thing and I said, what the heck is this? I said, oh, let me, let me thank them. I lit the candles and I sang and I was close to them. Even though they were in here with the video, I felt as though they were. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Norma. Happy birthday to me. What? Finally for Monday, an inspirational message from co-creator of Gavin and Stacey, Ruth Jones. Oh, what's the kidding? Not a lot, other than a global pandemic, but the question was rhetorical. Now listen, I'm not here to give advice. There's plenty of others will do that for you. It's your life, and I'm not about to tell you how to live it. I wouldn't do that to no one. I wouldn't even tell myself how to live my life. But I will say this. If you sees me in the mornings doing my daily run, my half marathon round Barry, don't even think about breaking that two meter rule. Because if you does, I will not hesitate to tell you quite clearly to back off. This has been the Smart 7. Stay safe, stay distant, and please wash those hands. We are on Alexa now. You can enable the Smart 7 and add us as a flash briefing. We're back tomorrow at 7. Please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, hello you. My name's Tom Price. Hello, I'm Dave Cribb. You should come and join us every day. We do a podcast called Cabin Fever, where we talk to loads of comedians who've had to cancel everything else in their lives. So they come on our podcast instead, don't they, Dave? Yeah, it's an isolation podcast. Uh, it's Dave, were you yawning the at the Owl. start of that sentence then? Was it just a little yawn? <laughs> yeah, it's basically the Great Big Owl isolation podcast. We'll have people on from all our podcasts, from your Rule of Threes, your Brian Rogers, your musicals, your bitchins. If you like any of our podcasts, if you like any of those people, chances are they'll be logging onto the Zoom call and just chatting because, let's face it, they got nothing else to do. Also, there'll be a quiz on the bill. All right, see you soon. Lots of love. Cabin F-E-A-3709. Oh, 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 that's our Twitter name.